Hello everyone, welcome back to another Tinder Jeans video. So today as you saw in the thumbnail, I'm going to be showing you my Red Sea Reefer 350. Now I've had this tank for quite a long time, I bought it probably about four years ago and I kind of rushed into this hobby without even knowing what I was doing. I watched a couple of videos on YouTube and thought, oh yeah, I can do that, That's, that looks well easy. I, I can easily get a tank together and, and look after it and things like that. And the first year of having this tank, it was a bit of an eye opener. I shouldn't have jumped in at a tank that was so big um, and I probably should have gone something that was a little bit more easy to care for. But for me, I'm either all in or I'm not in it at all. So I jumped into it straight ahead and it's, it's not been difficult, but if I was going to give anybody a big bit of advice when jumping into the saltwater hobby, I'd say start off small um, and, and do your research because if you don't know what you're doing then you're going to waste a lot of money. I started off basically at the, the higher end of the aspect if you, if you put it, want to put it that way, um, basically because I knew what I wanted, I knew what I liked and I just wanted to go straight for it. So I'm going to take you through the... the ooh, He's just come out. So my fish are quite temperamental. They don't like to come out that often. Um, this tank is situated in my bedroom. So you can see at a minute, I'm sitting in my bed. I've got a nice TV bed here. And I'll show you the view from where from where I sit in bed. So you can actually see why I've got the tank in the position it's in. It is gonna be moving, but I'll, I'll have show you a quick look of where, where I sit now and what, what view I actually have of this tank. So this is my bed. Um, ignore these. I promise. They aren't mine, honest. But yeah, this is where I sit on my bed and watch TV. They've got a nice big tall headboard so I can actually prop myself up and watch the telly and stuff. And from here, this is the view I have of the tank. Now, I, I love this view because it, I don't know, it gives the, the tank a bit more depth being at that angle. It makes the tank look bigger than what it actually is. I mean, it's a big tank actually when you look at it straight on, but from that, from a side, where it's got that sloping motion going all the way into the corner, it just gives it a bit more depth and looks looks a lot bigger than what it actually is. You might be thinking, oh, it's in your bedroom and with all the, the equipment you have on it, it can be quite noisy and it can. Um, I don't, I haven't had a lot of problems with this tank. You get the slight, slight humming noise from the pumps and every now and again, you'll get a little bit of water trickling or a gurgling noise at the back, but you can adjust that underneath the tank. But I normally sleep with a bedroom fan on anyway, so my fan is on 95% of the time. So it does tend to drown out a lot of the noise, but what I'm planning on doing is I'm gonna completely revamp this tank and I'm gonna be adding a load of new features to it. I'm gonna be redoing all the plumbing. I'm gonna be adding a lot more custom features to it. And once this tank moves, so at the minute it's on this wall, eventually it's gonna be moved and placed on that back wall just there. And so I'll still have the same sort of view. It's still gonna have that depth going into the corner and it's, it's gonna give me a little bit, I say a little bit more room in my uh, in my bedroom, but it's more just cause I'm, I'm very OCD and I like things a certain way. So I'll be putting up, I'm having a great big uh, wardrobe put on this side and then it should stop about there. And then this tank will have enough room to be flipped around and pushed onto that back wall. So that's the plans. I, I won't be moving it for a while cause I'm in the process of decorating. You can see over here, I've got the wall all chiseled out and stuff. I've had new plugs put in there and the walls all been ripped out there cause the house has just been rewired. So I'm in the process of decorating, but once everything's decorated, that tank will be moving over to that wall. So I wanna dive in underneath the tank now. I'm just gonna show you a few bits underneath and then we'll go through the other bits of the tank as well. Before I quickly jump underneath, you see these lights, they are very bright. I've, I've got my room completely dark. I do have blackout blinds as well because I work work night shift so I do like my room to be quite dark when I'm trying to sleep but with these lights as you can see they are very very bright and when you're laying in bed they do tend to shine in your face so what I built it was just a quick fix just to fix up the lights I'll talk through in a second but over here I have got this little black panel here and this is just a, a piece of clear plexiglass and all I've done is I've just stuck a layer of black plastic you can see it's coming off it's like sticky back plastic and all I would do is I'll just place that on the edge enough to where to where it literally just blacks out the lights. So when you are in bed and stuff and the lights do come on, they're not they're not blaring full hell on your face. But I'm gonna be upgrading this light. I'll talk you through this light in a second. But yeah, that's that was just my quick fix just to stop me from getting blinded every morning when I woke up. Now I've had to put a light on for this, but you can see how oh god that wall looks awful. So I've had to put the light on because underneath this tank I did have a light originally, 
but that light broke and I think that's because where I've tried to you can see all the foam's falling down where I've tried to insulate this this bottom part to stop it from being so noisy a lot of moisture built up in that area and the lights I had it said they were waterproof but I think it might have been the salt creep that's gone onto it somehow and splashed up that just corroded it and it just absolutely killed the light so I will be putting a light in there eventually to, to light all up and I'm going to get some nice lights as well just because I, I want it to be nice I want to be able to have the doors open and it still looks really nice so you can see here I've got the, the electrical side I've got a little custom made electrical socket or circuit there um, that's all going to be going because I've got way too many sockets for what I actually need. I'm, I'm only going to be adding another two or three plugs into this system so that will be changed eventually. You can see it's a complete mess. I've literally just got everything chucked in there and I've, I, I do have to have a little confession. I have neglected this tank for a good, I, I want to say two, three months now. It's just, I've been busy with work and it, it's been really difficult really just, just to get into this tank, just to break it down and do, do certain bits to it. So now that I've got, I've got a lot more spare time on my hands, I'm going to be putting a lot of work into this tank and try and, I want to try and make it a showpiece if I can so it's, it's going to look absolutely amazing. But underneath here, I'll just talk you through the uh, the sump that I've got. So if you do have a, a Red Sea Reefer 350 or any of the Red Sea uh, Reefers tanks, it, it looks fairly similar to this. Um, this tank on the left here, this is one that I actually had custom made for me. Um, because I wanted to put a refugium on this tank without taking up any of the bottom space because you can see I've got a, a reef octopus skimmer in there and this thing is absolutely huge it basically takes up the whole area of this middle section and to be honest I don't mind that I wanted a huge skimmer on here because my idea was to put a lot of fish in this tank so I wanted a huge skimmer that could actually deal with with the amount of bio load that was coming out of the fish then you can see of this top up tank here, this little reservoir, I've made a little lid for it here just to try and stop the uh, the water evaporation as much. As much. I cut a little corner off there just because I didn't want this to create a seal somehow underneath this lid. So I cut a little corner out just to let some air in. If it created a seal then obviously this water wouldn't drop so that's, that's the reasoning for me doing that. This uh, little refugium tank here does go all the way to the back. I'll be doing a big video on this, I'll be breaking it all down because I want to get all this custom plumbed anyway. You can see I've got a couple of little pumps there and then in here I've got a little canister filter. I will be redoing that canister filter as well. It's a really, really cheap filter. I think I paid about 10 quid for it on Amazon. It comes with two, it comes with two separate filters. Um, I just don't like the way it works. Obviously it's very cheap. You get what you pay for in this hobby. So I'm, I, it's, a, it's got a good ground base for it. But I'm going to be uh, modifying that slightly just so it works a little bit better for what I want. I do have a bag of carbon just there. You see a bag of carbon in there, then I'll start with two filter socks. Um, that's, that's about it for this tank so far. I haven't really added too much to this tank in the way of customization, but once I start getting into it, all the plumbing is going to be custom. Um, I'm going to be adding a lot of new features just to try and keep this as quiet as possible. I'm going to be adding a lot of foam, I'm going to be adding a lot of stuff in the bottom just to keep all the pumps quiet. Uh, the, I'm going to show you the viable um, canister there. That's going to be modified so that it works exactly how I want it to. And I'll be getting some lights as well, especially on this refugium. I want to get a really special light for this so I can, I can grow chata and stuff. I really want to try and get as much crammed into this tank as I can as possible just so that I, I don't want to do a lot of maintenance on it if I'm honest. I, I know it sounds lazy but I want this tank to try and sort of look after itself. I mean it's done well. Um, we're going to go into this top bit in a minute but for the amount of time I've neglected this for it's it's done really well on its own. I do still do all the, the basic stuff so I top up the water reservoir. Um, I do do the water changes as well but probably not as often as I should. But again all my nitrates and things like that they're not they're not that high. I mean the fish are all happy, not had any problem with the fish, the corals are all happy. So we'll move up to the top bit and you're gonna see why neglecting your tank is a bad idea. So looking at the tank, you can see it, it's, a, it's a nice layout. What I wanted with this tank is I literally wanted an entire rock wall. But I was going for the whole theme of when you're swimming in the ocean and you come to sort of a, a sea cliff, if you like, and it drops down to a dead, like a dead drop and you've got that rock wall that goes all the way down that was the sort of effect I wanted to go for this tank if I bring you over to the side 
if you look down the tank you can see this whole side here well you can't see because it's really bad but it's really dirty once i've cleaned all this out it looks so much better but all here is just solid rock it's one big block of rock and that goes all the way along and i wanted this so you could look all the way down and it looks like a sort of cliff edge that's that's the effect that i was going for with this tank and i was really happy now i originally wanted this tank to be mixed i wanted to have fish and coral as well now the the more i, I look at it i really want to get into the corals but for a tank of this size I'm not going to have the time to maintain the tank with the, the specific corals that I want. So in here you can see I've got a lot of this coral, I think this stuff is called, uh, I think it's Kenya tree coral I believe it's called. And then down here I've got a little leather coral um, and well I did have some green GSP there but you can see the algae that's built up and that's, that's from where I've left it so long. I do have some GSP just over this side as well which is doing okay. But you can see the amount of algae that's grown on the top layers. And that's, that's a, as a result of me leaving it so long and not going in there and, and dealing with that. Um, there is also a problem with the light. This, this light started off amazing. I can't remember the name of it. I think it's a, a Razor VTEC or something. I'm not entirely sure, but I spent about 700 quid on it. And for the first, I wanna say the first eight months, it was absolutely brilliant. Um, it's got all the timer and everything on it, it does it itself, comes on, turns off. You can program it to exactly how you want it and it was ideal. And then after I'd had it a while, all the blue LEDs in it went. Now I didn't have it running at 100%, it used to get to about 85% and that's as high as I would run it. And after that period of time, all the blue LEDs completely went. Luckily it was under guarantee, took it back to the shop and they, they replaced it within a week, gave me a replacement light and then within a week, I had another one sent out to me and I just sent back the one to the store that they, they gave me. Um, it's been about two and a half years on from that, maybe three. I can't remember how long the time is, I'm so bad with times. But the blue LEDs on it have gone again. Now they've not gone completely this time. If you crank them up to 100%, they're, they're on, but they're only on to the point where it would only be 5% originally. If you turn it down to 5%, that's how bright they are at 100%, which is not ideal. So I think a lot of the corals are, are starting to suffer from that. Um, the lights on this have only been on for a good hour, so everything's still waking up. You can see my toadstool down there, he's, he's slowly coming to life. But yeah, the tank's only just come on, so everything is coming out slowly. But yeah, that light's not, not the best light. And I do intend to change the light. I'm getting rid of that completely. Um, I'm gonna go for, some, I'm gonna try something new. I wanna buy some cheap LED panels online. Um, I think they work out to be about 25, 26 quid each. And I'm literally gonna have a row of them along here. I think I can fit four of them side by side along there. And that's gonna stop me having to use this bit of plastic just to block the light out. So they're all gonna be angled down at like a 45 degree angle and that way they should get all of the, the rock work in the light. I will have to build a custom bracket for it but that's again that's going to be in another video. So this video is going to be a custom build video so this video right now is just to show you the baseline of what I'm starting with. I'll let you see these are the two fish I'll quickly show you the stock in. So obviously I've got my yellow tang there oh and the other guys. The other guy is so shy, he's another tang. I'm not entirely sure what type of tang he is. I bought these two fish originally at the very beginning of buying this tank. And yeah, they've been in there from the beginning. You can see I've got a little clownfish up there. I did have two clownfish. Unfortunately, the other one died. I don't know why. Um, it was eating everything, woke up one morning and it was on the bottom. So I don't know what, that, what happened with that, but I've had this little guy for about six months now and he's doing amazing. I do plan on getting him a girlfriend. Um, so that, that is one of the new fish I'll be buying. Um, and yeah, I've got the, the little yellow tang there and I've got the other tang as well. Now, I did, you might think I've got quite a low stock in it. I did have quite a few fish in it. I had another three fish. I had uh, a sand sifting goby, I had a copper band butterfly, and I had a six line wrasse in here. Um, again, I, I didn't want to overstock this at the beginning and I liked the small amount of fish that were in here because it was easy for me to look after. Um, unfortunately, the goby jumped out. Uh, I found that one day, one morning on the floor, because I don't have a, a, a lid on this tank. So he somehow jumped out and decided that he didn't want to be in there anymore. Um, so yeah, that, that was quite a horrible thing to wake up to. 
the copper band butterfly got bullied so much by this yellow tank he literally thinks he owns this this tank so I'm, I want to get quite a few new fish for this tank and I want him to give him a little bit of a beating just because he's, he's such a bully he just bullies everything so that's why I've not got any any new fish in here recently because I, I can't afford to so with that copper band I had to let him out and I actually took him back to the pet shop and, and got my money I didn't get my money back as such I've got some, some food and stuff for him but it just weren't fair, fair for him to be in the tank and the six line wrasse that just miraculously disappeared I think it was quite an old fish again it was one of the fish that I bought at the very beginning and he was in here for a long long time a good three four years and I'm guessing he just died of old age when I got him he was very large anyway so I'm guessing he just sort of come to the end of his life but that's that's the stocking I've got a few hermit crabs in there a few snails uh, and that's about it but what I plan on doing is I do want to have a reef tank so by the side of my bed I've got a nice big space that I'm going to be working on and in that space I want to make again it's going to be a complete custom build from scratch I'm not going to go out and buy a tank or anything like a, like a ready built tank I'm literally going to buy the tank I'm going to make the cabinet make the sump and it's all going to be a custom build and that's going to be a future video that comes out very shortly but for now I'm going to be focusing on this video and focusing on this tank and hopefully you'll get a little bit more information from me and I can tell you where I went wrong at the beginning and the things that I, I, I would have done differently as well so that's just a brief overview of how my tank is as it stands right now there's going to be so many changes literally the whole tank is going to be effectively ripped down everything's going to be cleaned all the rock is going to be redone all the sand's going to be replaced some of the coral is going to be taken out i do have a, a tridacna clam in there that's going to be coming out and going into the small nano tank that i'll be building in the future everything in the sump's going to be taken out cleaned replaced and it's all going to be a custom job L like i said in my last video i'm i'm a bit of a tackle tart i like things to be a certain way and i want to build it myself I, i'm going to get a lot more satisfaction from building it than buying it and also i can make it exactly how i want it and it's it's going to be fairly cheap i don't want to go stupid this i don't want to spend out hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds on it i want it to do the job i want it to work effectively and i want it to look nice so the next couple of videos that come out about this tank are going to be me showing you what i've done step by step how i've modified certain things to fit my needs and maybe you can actually put some of those things into your own tank that you might be building yourself if you do have any questions with this tank at all then please leave me a comment or send me a, a direct message somehow and I'll, I'll try and help you out as much as I can. Like, as I said at the beginning of the video, I, I jumped straight into this tank when I should have started off with something a bit smaller. I literally just wanted to go for the biggest, best thing I could, but that, that's just me in general. I tend to rush into things before sort of doing too much research. I've learned from my mistakes now. Before I jump into anything, I'll do as much research as I can. So thank you for watching. I really appreciate you watching these videos. Like this is only my second video I'm putting onto YouTube. Never done YouTube before. I've never been in front of the camera. I've never done video editing. So for me, it's all new, I'm learning, so please bear with me. The videos are going to be getting better and better, hopefully. Um, and yeah, hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and I'll see you soon. So we have a quick look inside this cabinet. Oh my god!